Hello, my friends. Welcome back. I'm so happy that you're here for another episode of the Transform Your Life podcast. If you're listening to this on the podcast, then thank you so much for listening. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello. So today I wanted to give you the reasons why you're not getting the results that you want. Um, I'm looking over here on my screen just to make sure that I don't miss anything because I really want to nail this one home. Because if you've been putting in really hard work to try and declutter and organize your home and you're feeling like the results that you're getting aren't lasting, or if you're putting in a lot of time and effort and you're not actually getting like any results, then this might be the reason why. So the first one is you might not be clear on what you want and why you want it. Deep down, you know that something needs to change. So you walk around your house and you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't know where to start and everywhere looks like and feels like it's cluttered, but, and you know that you want something different for your space, but you're not 100% sure yet. You just know that you want all of the stuff gone. However, as you start sifting through this stuff that's there, you realize that you actually do want to keep this stuff. And then what? <laughs> you feel like you want to get rid of it, but then there's the cap 22 because you want to keep it all. So it puts you in kind of a overwhelming situation. So if you don't know exactly what you want and exactly why you want it, then it's really hard to reach your goal. Number two is you haven't created a clear action plan. This is really important because anytime you go to start any sort of project or new adventure, you have to write down exactly all of the steps that are needed in order to accomplish it. Now, the thing is, people think that when they are about to set on the journey of decluttering, organizing their home, they think that it's two steps, declutter, organize, and you're done. Now, that's not exactly it because you there's so many things in between and so many things leading up to it. So I'm actually re reading this book called Eat the Frog, and they say that most of the work for any single project is actually in the preparation and the planning beforehand, sitting down and writing out every single step that you need to do in order to reach your goal. And you're going to be 10x more successful in it. And that's what I do with my clients. Before we even touch a single thing, I go through the entire home with them, a, a home tour, and I ask them questions and I open up cupboards and I start to say, okay, what what's what are the kind of things that are in these boxes and what area do you feel like you'll be ready to get rid of more stuff in that given area versus another area, whereas that other area is more so for organizing versus decluttering. There's so many things that you need to ask and write down everything in a clear action plan and don't miss a step. Dropping off donations is included in that, researching the supplies that you'll need. This I take care of my clients for them so that they don't have to think or research or go, go and shop. Anything like that, I take care of all of that for them when I when I do the in-person decluttering sessions. But for you, that takes a while because you don't really know what fits in the space. You don't know what supplies are the best. You don't know um, which ones to choose because there's so many options. And so writing out a clear plan is one of the most important steps to this. And if you haven't done this and you've just said, okay, I'm going to start organizing today, you may not be getting the results that you want. So number, so, uh, number three is that you're not setting aside the time and you're not being productive in that time. So when you're starting to declutter and organize your home, you need to put yourself in your calendar like it's an appointment, but a very long appointment. Um, minimum 30 minutes. Uh, maximum, I would say, is like five hours if you're doing it on your own. If you have an action plan and you're really good at following through on an action plan and staying focused, then you can crush it in a whole day. But I don't typically advise that because I don't even work eight hours in days um, in a day in clients' homes just because it gets to be too much and our brain is, like eventually starts to get too tired especially if it's in your own space, I'm working in clients' homes and I'm not dealing with my own stuff. So you'll eventually just spin your tires if you go beyond like five or six hours because your brain is mentally exhausted. It's really important to eat food and fuel your body during your session as well so that your, your body can have the nutrients that it needs to, to continue to move on. Your brain needs that as well. So number three is if you don't set aside the time and make sure that time is super productive and planned out, then you're just going to be wasting your time and efforts. And I don't want that for you because I know that you are taking time off from work and you're booking your vacation days to do this and you're doing it on your weekends and during your summer holidays or winter break. This time is so precious and important. Um, to really do it in a in a very focused and productive way. And so if you've been spinning your tires, this might be the reason why. 
Number four is that when you do begin, you get overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, leading to the actions that you take will be temporary tidy ups versus lasting change. So if you don't know where to start and you haven't created your action plan and you just say, okay, I'm just going to start by taking everything out of my closet. That's like the worst thing that you can do, especially if you haven't set aside a specific amount of time, because what happens most often is you pull everything out then you're going to be even more overwhelmed and then you're not going to know what to do with the stuff that you've pulled out. And then by the time you realize that you've spun around in circles, you've gotten distracted, you've gotten overwhelmed. So you've probably even left the room and then you come back and it's like, crap, I got to pick up my kids. I got to go to work. I got to, you know, carry on with my daily routine, whatever it may be. And it's like, well, what do I do with all this stuff now? Of course, you're going to shove it back in the closet. And now it's more chaos than it was to begin with. So I never recommend taking everything out of a closet. You just don't need to unless you want to do like a really big cleanup and like scrap the floors and baseboards and and all of that. But essentially, you take out one item at a time. And that way, you're only doing what you can with the amount of time that you have. And then you just finish up any time that you have extra time. This prevents you from having your entire home taken over by your stuff that was once hidden away and preventing you from kind of reverting back from any progress that you might have made in the past. It's really overwhelming if you do this, especially if you were to collect everything from every closet and combine it in piles on your bed or whatever it may be. You're going to be living with those piles in your space for days, maybe even weeks, because you're going to be overwhelmed with everything that's there. So definitely avoid doing this. And that will avoid the overwhelm. Once you have created the action plan, like I mentioned in the first couple of steps, then you won't be so overwhelmed as to where to start. Because typically I suggest starting in the area that you think you can declutter more in, or there's like a lot of garbage or dishes or things like that. That's going to be quick to tidy up. And then you're going to be able to see through the stuff that is no longer there to take the next step. When you're decluttering and organizing, it's not about seeing the whole mountain. It's about taking one step at a time. And that's how you accomplish it. And that's how you accomplish really anything in life. Just one step at a time, one step in front of the other. And number five is you're not creating the habits and maintenance systems that are required in order to keep your results long lasting. What I typically hear from clients is they say, well, I tidied this up, but it becomes undone right away. Well, that's typical for any family especially like say your front entryway, not everyone puts their boots and shoes in the closet the same day. And so it's important to create a maintenance plan. So let's say you choose that at the end of every single night, everyone has to put their shoes and their coats and and hats and mitts away. And then you start refresh every single day because it's typical that most families don't put those things away. They either create hooks or baskets or shoe shoe racks external to the closet. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just a convenience thing of not having to open up the cupboard every single day and then close it, whatever it may be. But I'm pretty sure most families have something like this external to their closets. And that's totally cool because it's easy. It's easy to grab. It's easy to just set your shoes there as soon as you walk in. But it's important to create a maintenance plan if you're wanting to have a clutter-free space. And this goes for everything. If you have an island that constantly collects items, you have to do a nightly refresh. And if you don't choose to create a nightly refresh because it just doesn't work with your schedule, then create a weekly refresh. And if it's not a weekly, then at least the bare minimum, do a monthly refresh. And that way your space will always be um, maintained. You're not going to accumulate too much clutter because clutter accumulates from um, indecision, not knowing whether you want to keep it or not, in action, um, not putting things back to where it needs to go, and maybe even procrastination of, of of not making the decision, not putting back where it needs to go. And if something doesn't have a home yet, maybe not having created that home. So clutter can accumulate really quickly. So if you feel like the efforts that you've put into your decluttering and organizing in the past, if you feel like it's not working, you need to either change your habits, create new systems, or even get rid of more because 
it should be able to be maintained. It's just a matter of creating those long lasting habits. Like every single day, I make sure that when I leave my desk area, it's completely free of clutter and ready for me to come back every single day because then it makes me feel inspired to work. It makes me feel excited. It it, it allows me to work right away versus having to tidy up from my mess the days before. And I like to do that for everywhere. I like to do that in my bathroom, ready, set, uh, ready, reset, for me to come through the next day. I do I make my bed every single day so that at nighttime I feel ready and excited to sleep. I do that in my kitchen as much as I can to tidy up the dishes as soon as I'm done cooking a meal, just because it feels so nice to reset. So if you can create these habits and rituals every single night and have your family involved too, if, if you have your family with you, kids can do this as well. If they have stuff, then they can take care of their stuff as well. Also delegate small chores to them depending on their age. I have my son now clean one of the bathrooms every single week. He empties a dishwasher each day. He makes his lunch in the morning. He's nine years old. He's going to be 10 in April. But these are small things that that um, we have taught him so that he can be a, com- a, a contributing member to society. You know, his future self and future maybe wife or whichever is going to thank him because he's going to be um, an equal part of the family, helping out, knowing how to help out and so on. So it's really important to teach your kids, equip them. You're not being a mean parent by asking and having your kids do chores. It's actually really important and they're going to thank you one day. Even um, I have him bring his laundry down each week and then I've said I'm no longer folding clothes. I will just fold my own. I will wash your clothes, but it has to be downstairs for me to wash it, dry it. I'll put it in the basket and then you get to choose whether you want to live out of your laundry basket for the week or if you want to put your clothes away. It's very easy for kids to be able to do these things. And I make sure that it's not a crazy amount of time that he's putting towards chores. I write down a list of chores um, for the weekend. He gets to choose when he does it, and I write down how long I believe it's going to take for him, and I remind him that anytime he gets distracted, it's adding time onto his list. So if he goes on his iPad, gets distracted playing with toys, um, if he's feeling overwhelmed ever on what to start, uh, what tasks to start on first, um, or what to do next, then I will guide him. I'll say, focus on this, and then when you're done, either focus on the next thing or come to me and ask me, and I'm happy to guide you. because. Even adults get overwhelmed, so of course your kids are going to get overwhelmed as well, and that's not what you want um, to have them do or feel, so you're going to teach them how to delegate, prioritize, follow through on tasks, and to stay focused, and this is, this is a one of the most important things that you can learn in life, so if you're teaching your kids early on and also teaching yourself, it's going to cause a ripple effect, so Did any of those sound familiar to you? Do you feel like your clutter is your efforts to declutter and organize aren't lasting long term because maybe one of the five previous things that I mentioned? If so, then you're definitely not alone. In order to create lasting change, you need these five things. Okay, you need to have a clear vision and why that's most important. And number two is you need to know the order in which you need to complete the task. So writing out the plan, like I mentioned before. You need to create timelines for when you'll be able to create each goal or complete each goal. Create a timeline. Let's say if you want to organize and declutter your kitchen, give yourself one month and then give yourself small benchmarks either per day or per week. Number four is to ask for help and guidance when you're feeling overwhelmed and unsure of what to do because someone from someone external to you could look at the entire mountain and tell you exactly what steps you should take and on which days and so on. And that's what I that's what I'm the professional in, professional home organizer, whether I'm in your home or I'm helping you from afar virtually, I can help you. I can see objectively all of the all of the ways that you can take to reach your goal um, by asking you simple questions like that. Number five is to create systems, habits, and routines that maintain your progress and hard work because the worst thing is to do all of this investment of your time your money your energy and to have it all come undone very fast because you haven't implemented those systems and the habits to keep it up also it's important to communicate the new systems to your family so that they know what the new systems are. You can't just assume that they're going to know just because there's a label somewhere or just because you've neatly set something in one place doesn't mean that they know that that's a new system. So to have a family meeting, 
and say, hey, I, I wanted to create new systems for all of us so that it's easier to maintain and flow in our home. This is what the new system is. Can you please keep up with it? Yes or no. If they feel like it'll be too hard, ask them why. But remember how important it is for everybody, not to point fingers or blame or pass blame or shame or whatever it may be, but to get on board as a family. Decluttering what you don't want isn't the entire equation, as you now know, to getting the results that you want. It's only a portion of it, and that's where most people make the mistake, as well as what I mentioned before. There's actually a lot of steps that go into actually decluttering and organizing your home, apart from the things that I listed above. The main two ones, of course, are number one is to declutter what you no longer want. That's a no-brainer. And number two is to organize what you want to keep. Of course, declutter what you want, don't want, and then organize what's left. However, there's a lot of in-between things that you have to do as well, such as number one, decide where to start first. That's a big task. Number two is to declutter, of course. Um, But if you don't know where to start and you don't know what your goal is and your vision is and so on, then you don't really know what fits in that. So you don't know what to declutter, right? Um, Number three is to organize what's left. But organizing isn't just setting things in a neat way. It's creating systems. So number four would to be buy supplies, which can be overwhelming because you don't always know what to buy. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. If you're unsure of what to buy for your space, you can always send me a photo and I can give you a recommendation depending on what you want and need in that space. Number six is maintain the systems. That's just as big as decluttering and organizing the space because it can become undone real fast. Have you ever put a lot of time and effort into losing weight? And then as soon as you lost the weight, you're like, I'm good. I don't need to maintain this diet anymore or exercise. I'm good. I reached my goal. And then you go and binge eat or whatever it may be. And it's like, wow, that weight came on real fast. And then some. It's because you need to create systems and routine and long lasting habits, not just short term fixes to clean up your mess. Number seven is to cr- is to correct systems if they're not working. Nothing is permanent, so they can always bend and flow and change, and that's totally okay. You can assess a system if it's not working and change it wherever you see fit. And then number eight is to drop off donations or sell the things that you choose to sell. This one is a big one because if you leave your donations in your space, then it's likely to return back into your space because you're like, oh, maybe I'll use this or oh, maybe I'll use that. Or oh, the kids look to see what's in in the bags or, or the things that they chose to get rid of. And they're like, you know what? Maybe I'll start playing with this again. And then your efforts become all undone. And then the same thing with people wanting to sell items. They want to sell items because they want to recruit a bit of the cost that they spent. Well, the money is already gone. So ask yourself what your time effort uh, is worth, because if you're trying to sell something that you that you bought for like four dollars and you're trying to sell it for a dollar online, it's going to be really hard. And then that clutter just stays in your space anyways. So give yourself time frames for that as well. But I'll talk about all of that in future videos and the all of the in-between tasks for decluttering and organizing your space goes on and on and on. Those are just the top eight that I feel are the things that consecutively come up. So the thing that I would recommend for you to do now and anytime you're about to begin a new task, especially decluttering and organizing your home, is to write down what you want for your space why you want it, and every single thing that you need to do in order to get it done, including the seemingly small tasks, because trust me, these small tasks are not actually small after all. They're the big things. Um, And then one last thing is to ask yourself how you want to feel in your space. How does your space feel now? How do I want to feel? And how can I close the gap in between those two things? Because we want to feel at peace in our space, but our stuff is taking that away from us. And so often we're choosing our stuff over our peace because we're scared. We're scared of we we might need those things one day. We're scared of if we get rid of it, maybe we'll never do that thing again. Maybe that means crafting or knitting or um, going skiing or snowboarding or whatever it may be. We don't want to let go of past hobbies because we're afraid, well, what if I choose to do that again? Well, if you haven't done it in the past couple of years, especially, then chances are you're not going to. And worst case scenario, you get rid of all of it. You can buy it again in the future. Sure, it's going to sting because, well, you already had it and you could have just kept it, but you're choosing now peace in your space. You wouldn't be watching this video or listening to this podcast if you didn't want to let go of stuff in your life and achieve peace from within. Feel calm, feel excited to be in your space. 
we're paying a heck of a lot of money to live in our homes. So we don't want our, our stuff to be controlling our, our minds, our spaces and taking our peace away because you, you feel like by getting rid of stuff, you're wasting your money, but really you're just wasting your money on your rent and your mortgage. If your stuff is taking away your peace from you and you're not even wanting to be home, let that one sink in. So I hope that this has been helpful. If you're listening on the podcast, please subscribe, leave a review and send me a message on Instagram. If you want to connect, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching, leave a comment. If you have any questions below and subscribe as well and hit the notification bell if you want to be updated on any future videos. I typically put a video now out every single week. So thank you so much for watching and listening and I will see you next time. Bye.